Welcome to the NGIT website and math podcast. My name is Vanessa and today I'll be covering simplifying the nth root. So simplifying the nth root is taking really large indexes inside of radicals and simplifying them to their most prime form. And the goal to this is to know when you're dealing with square roots or cube roots you want to take some time to memorize very common perfect squares and perfect cubes because that's the key in doing these quickly because you want to take you're going to have to take out perfect squares and perfect cubes in order to simplify so let's just go in by doing a few examples first example is the cube root of 1 1 30 35 so now this is a pretty large number so we have to first think okay so we're taking the cube of 135 so now we have to break this up into two numbers that multi that where one of the numbers is a perfect cube so if you need to do some work on the side or Try not to use a calculator, but if you need to, like, you know, divide 135 on the side by a few times to figure out what the perfect cube is, um, you can do that. But one of the factors is 27 times 5, which gives us 135, and 27 just happens to be a perfect cube. So then what you would do is, is you would split it up inside of the radical first. This gives us 20... 7 times 5. The 27 is our perfect cube. So then if you, if you want to take the extra step in the beginning and really separate it, just so you know, you can multiply them separately and give them their own notation. Okay. So our perfect cube is right here and the cube root of 27 is 3. So this system just step simplifies to be 3 times the cube root of 5. And then because the 3 is just a constant, you can just multiply it in front without having to incorporate a multiplication sign. So our final answer is just expressed as 3 cube root of 5. Let's do another one. Another important thing to remember is when you're not only when you're doing your simplifying a, a radical that just has a number in it, but also with a number and multiplied times a variable that is raised to an exponent. So our example here is going to be the fourth root of 162 times a raised to the fourth. Now the thing you have to remember that with um, variables that are raised to an exponent, they don't have the sentence are the same role as a number. A number you're looking for perfect, uh, perfect roots, perfect squares, perfect cubes, and so on and so forth, in order to factor those out. When it comes to a variable, don't forget that when you raise an exponent to an exponent with a variable, um, the variables, I mean, the exponents are multiplied. Well, in the, sa in the same fashion, when you're taking the root of an exponent that has a variable in it, you divide. So you, instead of thinking, what is the, a perfect root for this variable, you think, how many times can, can this root go into its exponent? So let me explain that further with, with, these, with this example. So first, you want to you address the number. First of all, what's the 162? If anything, you can, if you want to do the extra step again, just separate it first. You can very easily just do 162 multiplied times the fourth root of a to the fourth. That way, it just gives you a, a chance to address each piece individually. So first, for the 162, you want to think of two numbers. Then that one number is going to be a perfect fourth root, fourth, perfect fourth power, and 
if you take a minute to do that by hand, or if, if you know your, if you happen to know your your fourth powers, you'll know that 81 is a perfect fourth power. So we're just gonna re write this as the fourth power, and this is gonna be 81 times two. And now for the second portion. Now again, it's more like when you're doing the per uh, perfect power of a variable, it's more of division rather than um, a power in the in the sense of a number. So you want to think, since we're doing the fourth power, and it's a to the fourth, how many times can four go evenly into four? Meaning, how many times can this four go evenly into this? into this exponent. The answer would be 1, right? Because 4 goes into 4 one time, which means that the 4th root of a to the 4th is 1. So it would just be a to the 1st. So then that's, it, it just happens to be a perfect 4th power, a to the 4th. So now we just have to worry about the rest of the number of 81 times 2. So 80, the 81 happens to be a perfect fourth, fourth power. Uh, it's actually 3 to the 4th. So all we have to do is take here and do 3, because that's the fourth power of 81, and then write what's left over, which is the fourth power of 2 times a to the first, and now at this point a has become a constant outside of the radical, so if anything you can just bring it together with the with the three, so then our final answer is going to be three a fourth power of two. And now let me, let me just go over one more quick example of, of the variable, of taking the roots of a variable, because that might have been a little bit fuzzy. In, this, in, that, in that particular case, a to the fourth was a perfect fourth power, so its result was just a to the first. Um, let me just do one more example with that type of um, case. Say if we had just the variable, I'm just going to deal with the variables at this point. If we had the... Um, cube root of, say, x to the sixth. Now, again, it's division, so you think, how many times evenly can this um, root go into this power? In this case, 3 goes into 6 twice, evenly, there's, and there's no remainder. So, in this case, the cube root of x to the sixth would be x squared. And that would be all you need to do. So what happens when there is a remainder? So let's try when we have, say, the square root of x to the fifth. Okay. When, it's, when there's no number, it's an imaginary 2, of course, so you think, how many times can 2 go evenly into 5? In this case, it's twice, right? Because two, 2 times 2 is 4, but then you still have 1x to the first left over. So in this case, because it goes in evenly twice, it's x squared, but then you still have 1 left over, so... You have an x to the first left over, which must remain in the radical. So in this case, the square root of x to the fifth is x squared times radical x. So hopefully that clears up any, any questions you may have regarding simplifying nth roots of variables. So thank you for visiting the NGIT website. If you need any further assistance, please feel free to stop by the CAPE or the Center for Academic and Professional Enrichment located in Kufrin Hall, Room 200. Good luck in your studies.